Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim I am Dr Muhammad Adnan working as assistant professor in the department of physics Kohat University of Science and Technology I welcome you to the course PHY 352 nuclear physics 1 today it is the 18th lecture of this course and the topic is nuclear force and interactions first i will give the learning objective at the end of this lecture the student will understand the fundamental concept of the nuclear force and how uh, the nucleons interact inside the nucleus now this is the first lecture regarding the nuclear force and interaction or we can say the nature of the nuclear force so so this lecture will be based on the uh, introductory remarks regarding the nuclear force and we will be discuss uh, discussing the <coughs> the uh, some of the aspects that we have already uh, concluded uh, in this course uh, till the uh, last lecture if you remember uh, uh, in the first part of the course when we were discussing the nuclear uh, properties the the mass distribution the nuclear charge distribution uh, the size of the nucleus uh, and after that we have discussed some of the the properties uh, like the quadrupole moments the magnetic moment so there we have concluded some uh, 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 remarks regarding the nuclear force so in this we will be just a uh, stating those uh, remarks here before we uh, start uh, the discussion on the nuclear uh, interactions or we can say the nucleon interaction inside a nucleus and uh, in that regard uh, after this lecture we will be discussing the the deuteron which is the simplest uh, nuclei having one proton and one neutron or in other word we can say the the two nucleon system and there we will be discussing these aspects now <clears throat> in this uh, course we are uh, following the book introductory nuclear physics by kenneth s crane third edition uh, in this lecture i have taken uh, some of the illustrations from this book okay now we start uh, with the statement that uh, in order to study the nuclear physics the aim is to calculate the energies and quantum numbers of the nuclear bound states that is the nucleons are lying in the bound state as, as we have discussed in the last few lectures and as i told you all the properties are associated with the quantum numbers uh and uh, those bound states have uh, quantized energies so the aim is to calculate the energies of these bound states uh and the quantum numbers so uh this will be done uh, uh in the rest of the the course but let let's have a look uh, at the atomic physics what uh, uh what people study in atomic physics regarding the the many body system since uh, when once we are talking about uh, the nuclear force so inside a nucleus uh, there are uh, many nucleons so in studying many uh, body system uh, like the in atomic physics uh, we have uh, electrons and nuclei so that interactions are governed by the coulomb's law or we can say generally the equation of electromagnetism so in atomic physics the equation of electromagnetism determines the interactions between the electrons and the nuclear so uh, uh, that is the fundamental uh, principle or we can say from starting from the first principle and then Uh, uh that interaction uh, between the electrons and the nuclei uh, have some quantum corrections or we can say the spin correction and relativistic effects can be uh, incorporated uh, in in those uh, 
uh, interactions uh, with the help of the perturbative analysis and that is uh, to a good accuracy since the fine structure is uh, uh, a small constant that is alpha is equal to uh, 1 over 137. Now, <clears throat> together with these quantum effects, uh, Pauli exclusion principle, which leads to the shell structure of the electronic orbits, again, uh, as I told you, uh, the, our aim uh, here is to study the nuclear uh, bound states with respect to the energies and the quantum numbers. So that that is the case uh, or the procedure uh, in atomic physics that starting from the Coulomb's law, adding the quantum corrections, and then based on the Pauli exclusion principle, that is one can uh, calculate numerically spectra of complex atom despite uh, the difficulties in many body uh, problems, as I told you. And so that Pauli uh, principle actually give us the, the shell structure of the electrons in the orbits. Now, uh, we are looking at these points because uh, uh, in nuclear physics, uh, unfortunately, none of these holds in uh, nuclear physics, and we'll see how, uh, because the the nuclear the force uh, that is the the interaction with which the 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 nucleons interact uh, uh, between nucleons are either simple uh, are neither simple or not fully understood. Now, because one of the reason for that is that the interaction between the nucleons are due to the exchange of the uh, uh, we can say meson between the 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 the, between the interaction between the nucleons are residual of the fundamental interaction between the quarks inside the nucleus. In the same way as uh, uh, one knows that the van der Waal forces between atoms and molecules which are also residual of the Coulomb interaction. So nature-wise they are Coulombic force and in the same way uh, nuclear forces like that. Now, for this reason, forces between nucleons are uh, described by semi-phenomenological forms. For example, the potential proposed by uh, Yukawa in 1939, which are only partly deduced from the fundamental principles. Now, so uh, based on these uh, conclusions, we can say that the subject of nucleon-nucleon potentials is very complex and we'll give only a quantitative, uh, qualitative discussions. Uh, our basic guidelines uh, will be uh, shortly seen here. So, uh, as I told you that this, uh, this lecture is based on the uh, introductory remarks regarding the nuclear force and the interaction uh, of nucleons, but uh, uh, this uh, interaction will be uh, uh, fully understood once we are starting the uh, various nuclei. For example, we'll be talking about the deuteron in the coming lecture. So what are those guidelines? The first one is that protons and neutrons are spin half fermions and therefore obey the Pauli exclusion principle which states uh, in a closed system, no two identical particles can be uh, in the same uh, energy state. So that is the same uh, in atomic physics uh, that uh, still the nucleons, uh, once we are st uh, studying the nuclear nuclei, so nuclei uh, have those nucleons that is proton and neutron, they are also fermions, so they obey the Pauli exclusion principle. Uh, as I told you, in the first part of the course, we have discussed the various aspects of the nuclear force that comes out from the conclusions of the nuclear charge distribution and mass distribution that nuclear force forces are attractive and strong. And that comes out because the binding energies are roughly uh, 10 to the power 6 times the corresponding atomic energies. Uh, if you remember, the, uh, the binding energies of nuclei or in mega electron volt. So that is strong force because they, they are uh, the nucleons are st strongly bound uh, to uh, one another or we can say uh, inside the nucleus they are bound 
by a very strong uh, energy. And uh, this is, uh, uh, they are, however, short range. That, that is also concluded in the first part of the course. That is, uh, uh, the nuclear force uh, is experienced in a very short range. And that, that uh, aspect comes out from the mass distribution that the nuclear density is somehow uniform and uh, do not agglomerates. And in that regard, we concluded that <coughs> short range force. Uh, the combination of strong and short range makes two nucleons system only uh, marginally bound, but uh, creates a, a, a rich spectrum of many nucleon state. As I told you, uh, we will be starting first the two nucleon uh, system, that is deuteron, which is lightly uh, uh, bound because of the very uh, uh, small uh, binding energy compared to uh, the many nucleon states. That is the binding energy per nucleons are around meg 8 meg electron volt. But once we are talking about the two nucleon system, so then the binding energy per nucleon is around 1.1 meg electron volt. So the fermions are obeying the Pauli exclusion principle and the nuclear force is attractive and strong uh, based on those conclusions that we have done in this course. Also, we have uh, uh, concluded that once we are discussing the various aspect of the semi-empirical mass formulas and the nuclear mass distribution, nuclear force are charge independent. Uh, that is, they are blind to the electric charge of nucleons. If one were to turn off the Coulombic interaction, the nuclear proton-proton potential would be the same as the neutron-neutron potential. That is, uh, this, this is charge independent. So that comes out uh, to be uh, from this example that the binding energies of these isobars, uh, isobars are, are those nuclei having the same number of nucleons. So for example, we have a tritium and helium-3, uh, both have three uh, nucleons the binding energies uh, for the for the for the tritium is around 8.4 mega electron volt and for the helium 3 it is 7.7 .7 mega electron volt now this difference in the binding energy is attributed to the coulombic interaction between the proton and the helium 3 that is around this thing now uh, one can find out that uh, uh, radii of the uh, the, the system that is one obtain a very reasonable value for a mean radius of the system that is around 2 femtometer and uh, that, that can be calculated by uh, or measured by other means. If you remember once we were talking about the mass and charge distributions of the nuclei we concluded that nuclear forces are short range force uh, beyond 2 femtometer uh, uh, the nucleons do not interact uh, with the, with each other once they are separated uh, more than two femtometer apart, roughly speaking. So these are some of the conclusions that we have already uh, discussed uh, in this course, or we can say uh, we have concluded uh, the these uh, the, the remarks uh, in this course till now regarding the nuclear force and the interaction of the nuclei. Now, nuclear force also saturates, that is, uh, as uh, uh, on the last slide I told you that beyond around two femtometer, uh, the nuclear force uh, do not uh, uh, active. That is, uh, if you remember, the binding energy per nucleon is uh, eight mega electron volt, and that is because the nuclear force is saturated. It appears that each nucleon interact with a given fixed number of neighbors, whatever the nucleus is, that is, uh, uh, those aspects were discussed in detail in this course. Now, reversing the order of interference, physicists could have derived the form of Coulomb's law from the spectrum of bound state of the hydrogen atom. This is not possible in nuclear physics because there is only one two nucleon bound state, that the deuteron, and that is the, will be the uh, part of our discussion from the next uh, lecture. 
Now, uh, as I told you in the next lecture, we will be discussing this two nucleon uh, system and we will see how the two nucleon uh, deuteron is having one proton and one uh, neutron. So, you will see the interaction based on the nuclear force uh, in detail. Now, to do this, we need to uh, uh, attack on more of the difficult problem of nucleon nucleon scattering that is uh, once we were discussing the simplest case and then we'll be discussing the nucleon nucleon uh, scattering problem now uh, if we uh, uh, just conclude uh, whatever we have uh, discussed on this previous slide to study the, the force between two nucleons, we can already guess uh, at a few of the properties of the nucleon nucleon force. That is the first one that uh, this force is a short range, that it is stronger than the Coulombic force. Uh, the nuclear force can overcome the Coulombic repulsion of proton in the nucleus. Also at long distances, by long distances I mean the atomic sizes and at short distances I mean as I told you, once it is in the range of 2 femtometers, so this, this force activates and one which is at larger distance, by larger distance, I mean the atomic size. The nuclear force is negligible, feeble. The interactions among the nuclei in, <coughs> in a molecule can be understood based on the Coulombic force. Now, some parts are immune from the nuclear force, that is, uh, the electron field uh, do not feel the nuclear force at all inside the atom. Uh, and the two nucleon, nucleon, the nucleon, nucleon force seems to be nearly independent of whatever nucleons uh, are neutron or proton, and as we have discussed, this is charge independent. So we can conclude uh, these uh, uh, introductory remarks regarding the nuclear force before we uh, start the nuclear nuclear interaction part in this course. So these are the four, and uh, we have two more. Now, the, the nuclear nuclear force. Uh, depends on whether the spin of the nucleons are parallel or anti-parallel. That is, uh, the, the nuclear force does depends upon the, the spin orientation. And that uh, also give uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, nucleon, uh, nucleon, nucleon force include a repulsive term which keep the nucleons at a certain average separations. That is, the nucleon, nucleon interaction uh, uh, is having two part. One is the nuclear force and we have Coulombic force as well. Now the spin dependency as we have discussed in this fifth uh, point, the nuclear nuclear force has a non-central or we can say a tensor component. Uh, that is that part of the force does not conserve orbital angular momentum. Uh, which is a constant of motion under central forces. That non-central means that the nuclear-nuclear interaction is not along the line joining the two the two nucleon, but rather uh, because of the spin orientation, there is a spin component or the tensor component, uh, uh, which is a non-central part. So. Uh, based on these uh, introductory remarks regarding the interaction of nucleons and the nature of the nuclear force, uh, we will be next uh, discussing the, the deuteron, which is the simplest of the nuclei regarding the nucleon-nucleon interaction. So with this, I thank you for your time.